morning friends and folks. Uh, we're opposite Drummond's private bank uh, this morning. Why are we opposite a private bank? Well, uh, it's not because I won the lottery and I'm about to deposit my winnings, unfortunately. Uh, it's because this private bank, that it's been here a long, long time, uh, is just around the corner from Horse Guards. And I was thinking yesterday quite a lot about wealth. Why? Well, there was a super interesting article in yesterday's Telegraph, okay? You need a million pounds, by the way, to get uh, an account that Drummond's here, and then you pay fees on every transaction. But it's a lovely uh, bank, and it's in a super, super location, right in the center. Article about wealth. Okay, so there was a, a long story in yesterday's Telegraph newspaper about the rising price of hotel rooms in London. Hotel room inflation. Uh, and that was interesting because it mentioned specifically uh, the new price levels that have been set by the peninsula and then of course by the hotel right in front of us across the road, the new raffles at the old war office, pretty much opposite horse guards. Now, why is it interesting? Well, because that article broke down the nationalities who were spending all of that cash on rooms that start from £1,200 a night. That's right guys, 14, 1500 US dollars for one night for a basic room, okay? We're not talking super glamorous here. However, I was surprised because I was thinking, hold on, it's going to be lots of new money from India, from China, from Latin America, from certain parts of Africa. But no, would you believe, folks, it's not. The majority of visitors, okay, to raffles across the street are, drum roll, from the USA. I was genuinely surprised. I thought that most American visitors still prefer the old, the English hotels like Claridge's, the Lanesborough, and of course the Ritz. I guess super rich Americans want something a little bit better than the Ritz. And hey, they're flocking to Raffles just across the street there. Red bus is about to pass it. Oh no, it's not, it's turning around the corner. Yeah, just over there. I bet Raffles uh, lobbied very hard the council to get that bus stop removed from right outside their door. It's most unsightly and I'm sure the guests are frightfully disappointed, uh, especially those with rooms at the front. Anyway, so after the uh, visitors from the US who obviously have shed loads and truck loads and everything loads of cash to spend, uh, comes people visiting from France. Okay. Um, US, France, Japan was mentioned and I seem to remember, without specifically referring back to the article and looking at it, that Australians came in fourth. All of that money from mining and other uh, activities in Australia. Now, surprising thing, there wasn't so much the cost of the room. I mean, we could pretty much guess it would be crazy expensive. But, wait for it, folks. The amount of money people are spending in the restaurants, okay? They are very expensive restaurants. They've got a multitude of restaurants in that hotel. And apparently, it's not uncommon, according to the article, for people to spend, another drum roll, upwards of 800, yes, that's right, 800, a thousand dollars, 800 pounds on a meal. Would you believe it? I wouldn't believe it. I would actually have not believed it had I not read it in the uh, completely reliable and highly informative Telegraph newspaper. Yeah, pretty extraordinary if you think about the numbers, folks. Um, well, why were they talking about that? Well, because not only do we have this new hotel here, we've also got the Peninsula, uh, but we have other hotels coming shortly. There is going to be the Emery, okay? So a little branch of uh, Claridge's, the Emery. They're just finishing it off. I'm not sure if it opens this year or next year uh, on Knightsbridge. Super, super, super prime location for the Emery. Two new Mandarin Orientals open in London in the next 12 to 18 months. Uh, and a couple of others as well. You would not believe it, would you? Uh, lest we forget Wardle Forstoria, just around the corner, um, in the uh, Nabalty Arch. It's just extraordinary. Where is all of this new cash coming from, folks? Uh, is it the fact that a lot of this uh, COVID and post-COVID cash that was handed out in, you know, PPE contracts and so on, has a lot of that money finally been cleaned? One moment and worked its way back into the system. People are now happy to spend it and enjoy it because they're like, hold on, we've banked all of this cash, we've cleaned it, and it's ready to go. Because have we not been told in the last two, three years that 
gosh, there's no money available anymore for you know social welfare recipients, for housing and childcare and other things. Have our governments not been saying to us there is no money left in the pot? We're broke. Covid wrecked the economy. Inflation's out of control, and there's no cash. Now we know why there's no cash because it's all been funneled off uh, so that a few bigwigs can spend it all in these uh, top-notch new hotels. I mean, that would be my interpretation. Unless I'm missing something here. Any economists? Uh, feel feel free to comment uh, about what I'm missing in my little analysis because it seems very odd that on the one hand we're being told there's no money left. It's all gone. Councils are broke up and down the country, etc., etc. Yet there seems to be an absolute sloshy fund of cash available for these £800 meals, £1,000 plus rooms. And bearing in mind, those rooms that are £1,000 a night, uh, that's the entry price, folks. Typical suite, you're talking 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, whatever, £1,000 a night, a night. Now, unless you are Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, a handful of other people, the idea of spending five figures every single night to stay in a hotel suite, mind-boggling, come on. You wouldn't be spending it unless you knew it was coming back uh, pretty soon. In other words, you've got a nice cushy business or you've got a massive amount of cash hidden offshore which you can dip into whenever you want. It's all very odd, but yeah, that's the way that I see it. Anyway, enough about uh, international corruption. We're here for the tourists. This lovely tourist just uh, pointed, posted, pointed to the sign. Um, blues are here, but the doors of the boxes have been pulled open. Why have they been pulled open? No, everybody, the horse didn't have a chicken gel frazy last night. He didn't have a very spicy curry. That's not the reason they've opened the doors for ventilation. They've opened the doors because the blues are off. They will be leaving very soon. After a long 72 hours here at Horse Guards, and that constant, I'm, I'm sure, I mean, I could, I could feel it, it's, it's perceptible, that constant subconscious desire to quickly and accidentally drop the sword uh, and behead a super annoying, disrespectful Taurus. I would have done it already, yeah. I would have done my own personal reenactment of uh, the execution of Charles I by lopping someone's bonks off. Oh, VIP's coming. Is it the PM with his high-speed escort? <laughs> nope. I think it's a learner driver uh, who pushed the wrong button in his car and put on the blue lights instead of the warning lights. Yep, that's what I think. Hey, let's have our picture taken without even being able to see our face because we've got such a bushy, fluffy hat. Interesting approach. <laughs> Polish. <laughs> Actually, wait, I'm not completely sure thinking about it. I thought I thought I heard Polish, but it's not. tend to ask her what is the point in having a picture taken when your hat is so far over your eyes that you can't even recognize yourself in your own picture very odd thing to do but hey there it is you tell the horse is super relaxed this morning because he knows he's going home also folks for any of you that didn't uh, hear it in yesterday's video world exclusive uh, Ormond is up at Melton, out to grass, but, 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 we'll be back here at Horse Guards very soon. Uh, also, Pagan, and thank you to the viewer that uh, kindly pointed this out, Pagan, the lifeguard horse, uh, has been seconded to the musical troupe. This is why for some time we didn't see Pagan. So, Pagan, musical troupe, Ormond, up at Melton, um, typical rotation, to be honest. That's also why, and again, somebody mentioned this yesterday, uh, talking about, you know, where's my favourite trooper? Where are they hiding him? Has he gone? Has he retired? Has he moved? Has he quit? Etc, etc, etc. I never discuss the details of individual troopers or what they're doing for obvious reasons. But let's just say that the troop movements often are in sync with the horse movements. Okay? So if a horse is going somewhere and mysteriously vanishes off the face of the earth, 
assume that's where the trooper is as well. Trooper troopers. Uh, I will say no more about that. So that's the way it works, folks. Let's not forget we've got the armoured part of this regiment, or these regiments, uh, Umbrella Regiment HCAV, uh, that is down in Wiltshire, in the countryside, down in Bulford, in lovely Wiltshire. England proper, that is, super far away from London, uh, and it really does feel like, uh, yeah, England proper down there. I know Wiltshire very well from my youth, and goodness me, it's, uh, it's nowhere near as far from London as Cornwall, but it's far more sort of, how do I say it? Countrified, if that is even a word. Uh, English people, you will know what I mean when I talk about places like uh, Bristol, Avon, Somerset, Wiltshire. Good, good solid farmer land. Um, and in addition, of course, many are over at Hyde Park and the musical troupe who are travelling all over the place. And as if that wasn't enough, it's also Melton, which is where the horses go out to grass up in Leicestershire. And they can't go out to grass by themselves. Uh, they need to have troopers with them to take care of the horses. So that's where the troopers are. They're all over the place, to be honest. The life of a trooper in HCAV uh, sees you all over the place. It really does. And it's kind of ironic because a lot of people wonder, hey, like, why would they join just to sit on the horse or horse guards, folks? It's a teeny weeny part of, uh, of the duties of a trooper in HCAV. In fact, thinking about it, the reason I was most surprised about the nationality list um, for those staying at the old war office is that I'm pretty sure there was no mention of Chinese visitors on the list. Now, I would have thought personally that would have been where the majority of the new cash would be coming from for various reasons. So, a surprising omission. So, uh, folks in the US, where is all of that money coming from? Historic high in terms of the US national debt, trillions of dollars of debt. Uh, and yet trillions of dollars for fine dining in London. It's all very curious. What time is it? 11.16. Okay, so just before I got here, the, uh, the very first troopers, one second. Gosh, that carries what his hands for. He's got three, uh, three boys with learning needs there. That's, that's, that seems like a lot for one carer, no? What a top man he is to, uh, to take care of three lads at the same time. So, yeah, I missed the, uh, the lifeguards, the first bunch of lifeguards riding in. However, 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 uh, there'll be more movement shortly. Behind the bollards, peasants. Oh, that photographer was a lucky boy. He just got through in time. So some new faces here actually with the police. Okay, so the blues are about to be relieved, everybody. That's right, we've got lifeguard horses coming out. Uh, and of course, I, as always, I'm exceedingly enthusiastic about the prospect of identifying a new horse. Let's see what's coming up next. Goodbye to this beauty. Uh, blues will be back in a few days, everyone. All right, let's get my little horsey list ready. I updated it yesterday actually with a couple of new names, folks. Holy, holy, ho. Who have we got here? Oh. This horse is like, that's enough. I want to go back to Knightsbridge right now. No more guard duty for me. I quit. And he's off. I actually really did think the horse was going to have a major Monday moment. But no, fortunately it didn't happen. Right, back to the reason we're here. Golly, this is quite a strange number. One moment, folks. This is Orion, who's back here, this horse. I should, to be honest, have probably guessed that just by virtue of that exceedingly 
prominent star. But it is. Yeah, I've just, just checked on the list. Let's pop on to today's Horsey Diary. I like the fact I'm keeping a diary because yesterday we had uh, Lyric and Tipper uh, and they replaced Passchendaele and Romalia. So we've now got Ryan plus, let me go to the other end. Let's see who else we've got with Ryan. Mm -hmm. No folks, it's not the name of all the horses after uh, obsolete models of Ford motor cars. Let's have a look. Oh, without even thinking about it, this is a horse that was here last week. Why? The marks on the nose. See that? Very distinctive. I forgot the name. I should know it, actually, but I can't remember. We, we saw this horse last week, 100%. I do remember. Oh, horse is back. He's like, yes, I remember you too. You're John. Yes, horsey, I am. Let's have a quick look, one second, at the number. I can focus on today's events here at Horse Guards, or this morning's events. Oh yes, this is the one with the super, super worn down hoof number. Let me look back to the diary. Trinity, everybody. This is Trinity who's back. So we're still on the same troop as we were last week. Uh, lifeguard troop, that is. So Orion the other end, Trinity this end. Hody ho ho. And look at this cloppy monster here, look at this. Wow. That's a really beautiful horse. <laughs> How fuzzy is its mane, look. The way that those hooves are sort of dragging, they're so large. They're dragging on the uh, on the pavement. I did wonder what that noise was. I thought somebody was carrying or, or trying to pull along a, uh, a suitcase with wonky wheels. Very, very curious dragging noise. Okay, meanwhile, everybody, they're uh, still changing over in the yard. Uh, the front area here is kind of open again. That's the blues, last blues being taken off. Replaced by a lifeguard in the tunnel who's going to be the new gatesman. Let's uh, pop in, have a quick look as our new gatesman. First lifeguard gatesman of the week arrives here in the yard. There's zero chance of anyone getting shouted at, uh, unless they actively get in the way. But it doesn't hurt to get in position and watch, does it? No, it doesn't. That's the relief done, and here comes the gatesman. Looking resplendent this morning. people don't quite know how to uh, how to react but then I would be the same if for example I wanted to watching the guards around Lenin's tomb in uh, Red Square if I were at a sensitive site in China I would not have a clue how to behave so much as I laugh uh, and sometimes occasionally in a very light-hearted way mock I would be exactly the same if I were dropped into a similar situation uh, in a country where I don't speak the language or know how it works so I, I do feel free to, to sort of laugh at it because I always happily laugh at myself for my own stupidity, uh, and a lot of you know that. Okay, so the chain is going back up. He's not about to whip the, uh, the trooper, folks, with that chain. I know what you're thinking, but no, that doesn't happen during daylight hours. He's locking him in. This is a trooper that actually doesn't move. He'll be there for two hours now. I'm not even sure I've ever seen that trooper pacing. Anyway, that is our guard change complete. We've got a little teeny bit more movement. What I mean by that, well, we're going to have the uh, the rest of the blues popping out shortly uh, and then the rest of the lifeguards popping in. That'll be it done. Who's this, who's this trespasser? <laughs> Morning. <laughs> scoundrel he is. Definitely going to get arrested one day, that scoundrel here at Horse Guards. Okay, let's see if the tourists are going up to Orion. Uh, his shoes. Lucky the horse didn't see them and start laughing. The thing is, we've got a rather annoying noise across the road. You, a lot of you mentioned or ask in the comments, why 
are the noises constantly in the background? Well, uh, often there are roadworks happening. If not, over there, things are being dug up, changed around, cables, blah, 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 blah. Bearing in mind, just over on the right is the Ministry of Defence. They've always got something happening. But today's uh, constant little brrr buzz noise uh, is this hydronic platform. I don't know what they've been using it for, but that's what's making the noise. I think they're taking it away now, so that flipping time, eh? Compared to uh, life up at Melton, where I seem to remember one of the horses, when I was in the stables, uh, he said, John, can I tell you something? And I said, yes, horsey, what is it? He said, I've got to tell you that it's very, very, very distracting being on duty in London. Because when we're up at Melton, we're completely left alone, nobody's touching us. And, and this, this shocked me, the horse's language. He said, up at Melton, okay, even in the noisiest moments, and I'm quoting here, you couldn't even hear a mouse fart. I was shocked when the horse said that, but it makes sense. I think he was trying to tell me that there's pretty much silence all the time. Whereas here in London, there's uh, pretty much no silence. Because even at night, when this place is closed and the horses are safely locked in the stable area, there's still noise. Why? Because you do get a lot of silly people, clowns, thinking this is some kind of racetrack, Whitehall, and zooming up and down it. Uh, motorcyclists, in the summer months, lots of uh, little boys from the Middle East with their rather expensive cars zooming up and down, much as they do in West London. So that explains, guys, you know, that's quite literally from the horse's mouth, the differences between being on duty in London uh, and the peace and quiet of Melton. I think the horse meant to say couldn't hear a pin drop, but you know, I've seen the mice in the stable area, so I get it. I understood where he used the... Uh, example of, uh, of a mouse that the other horse is looking over at the other end like, why don't you come and talk to me oh. roll up roll up fingers up tongue out <laughs> uh, in other words pretty much a, a standard instagrammable tourist picture here at horse guards not, no idea why uh, you'd wear kind of short boots and a very low-cut skirt when it's still pretty damn cold. It's about mm, 12, 13 degrees. I mean, cold enough to have uh, these on, people. Look, yes, fingerless mitts. It's still chilly, chilly, chilly. I'm just kind of keeping an eye out for what's going to happen in the yard in a second. I will dash in the moment it does. Back with spectacularly unique Trinity, who's like, get your hands off me. Those markings, guys, either side of the mouth. No other horse looks like that. So I'm disappointed. I should have recognized, uh, I was gonna say her, but I still don't know. Oh, yeah. Trinity, nod if you are a mare. Trinity, are you a mare? Okay, maybe it is a gelding. Very, very good looking gelding. So, what do you mean, gelding? Oh, just like, look. My kingdom for a horse. I don't want the kingdom, I just want some oats. Which are Shakespearean play, folks, is, uh, is that from? Horse, my kingdom for a horse. Please tell me that I'm pretty sure that's Shakespeare. The problem is I don't remember which. Which is the third, maybe? I can't remember. Uh, I never really focus very much in my English lit lessons, so apologies, guys, for my ignorance of my own uh, <laughs> cultural heritage. It's very, very windy, actually. It might set the horses off a little bit. See the mane? Look, it's really blowing up. Like my videos, which uh, appear to be stuck in the sort of 10 to 20k <laughs> views range. <laughs> Not that I actually care, folks, uh, because you know what? It's fun. It is. It's so fun that even police officers who could be in the station having a fry up, they could be having toast, beans, bacon, sausages, eggs, even black pudding. Instead, they prefer to come down to horse guards, stroll around, look at the horses and get some pictures. It's that exciting that even the police come down 
to enjoy the sights, sounds and scenery. Along with all of these lovely tourists, look. Bubble hats, smiles, it doesn't get any better. And most importantly of all, let me get in the, into position. Look at this. Horses are coming out to meet us, everyone. They're running over to the camera. They're so happy to see us this morning. Look. Morning, guys. And the couple of horses at the back. Which fluffy monster is he riding, I wonder? Clippy Clopperoo. Okay, that is it for the blues, guys. They are done, they're off. Finito. Oh, she just got told off and told to get to the other side. Naughty little jogger. I almost got myself in trouble then. Oh, 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 that was close. That was very... <laughs> oh, oh, he was not paying attention at all. That would have been a bit of a disaster if his family had carried on walking because there are kids at the front. Oops. Oopsie. <laughs> that was close, no? <laughs> the mum just looked at me. She's like, uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> right, let's see what happens when the guard comes back in. Um, I would have felt sorry for that guy, to be honest, because he was, uh, he was busy with his family. <laughs> he didn't notice. Oh, now he's blushing. He doesn't want to be in here. <laughs> Wait. I can't say that I blame him, uh, to be quite honest. But what's going to happen next? Oh, wait, I was going to walk into the middle, but then I realised I can't, I'm not allowed. Why? Because the middle area is still sealed. It's still sterile. Officers here and officers at the other end. Guard change still ongoing. People are peering around the corner here because the guard is talking to his colleague. So I'm pretending to be an inquisitive tourist. What's happening around the corner? I don't know what's happening around the corner. Something's happening around the corner. This, look. It feels a bit like we're snooping on, on a private conversation, guys. Luckily, though, we can't actually hear anything. But, um, okay, the, uh, <laughs> The slightly dizzy tourist has gone. Trooper versus retired trooper. Okay, good. Clean and clear. Okay, back to the front. Uh, I will endeavour to capture the rest of the lifeguard horses arriving because it's always nice to have an idea of which horses are here. That will happen I mean, I would expect in the next 90 seconds, realistically. I'll run back in the second I see them moving. After that, I expect uh, this morning's palace crowds to start arriving. It's now 34 minutes past 11. So it's still very early, unfortunately. of people here it might look kind of deserted but no plenty of people behind me probably hear people yabbering on etc however oh damn it it's me not being fast enough here we go look here they come folks luckily they're just uh, very 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 casually strolling through the tunnel today there's no charge of the light brigade here we go number one Number two, look out for any really unusual horses. Number three. Number four. Number five. Oh, there's Invader. Number five, definitely Invader. Number six, very curious beauty. And number seven. Now we've got two mustachio troopers uh, in this group that have just arrived secondary. Goodness me. Even with that many horses in there you can see it's a squash okay that equals look at this gives you an idea full complement of military police or sorry ministry of defense police seven officers on duty here in the yard this morning and here come the hungry hordes guys yep leaflets were handed out here yesterday anybody wanting to get fed come back tomorrow uh, and they're all here
Look. Desperate for exposure to horses, guards, and YouTube. Right, off to the front we go, everybody. Let's try and get ahead of the crowd. It was uh, pretty reasonably populated, but all of a sudden, it's packed. Let's see what happens at the front. If, ideally, I can get right in front of Orion. That's the, uh, the plan. Right in the middle. Ah, obviously I decided to come out here to the front. What happens is a massive crowd around the archway inside. Typical. I was thinking to myself, the second that I leave, it'll be inside where the focus should be. Every time it happens that way. Now I walk into the yard and the crowd will vanish to the front. <laughs> Guaranteed. I think it was because the trooper hadn't put the chain back up. Oh, they're trying to, the girls are trying to speak to the guard. Wait, I don't know what they're trying to say. I tried to say something, like, are you single, perhaps? I think the group's German. I mean, they got lucky here because they've got one of the tallest of the lifeguards. Who's up next? I mean, they're all pretty tall, actually. The ladies here that are waiting are pretty tall. I think I might have just missed that, actually, when they were starting to come through. Always the way. I must remember, look behind me as I'm going out the gate. That's it. That is good, yeah? She actually said that is good, and I just trod in horse poo. Now, I'm not sure whether or not, for historical reasons, uh, the guard would agree to date a German lady. Okay. At the same time, I'm not sure whether uh, a fine Fraulein from Bavaria. Uh, would want to date a British trooper. Oh, I don't think the trooper liked my comment. Is that what you mean? Of course I date a, a friendly Germanic girl. They're wondering actually if they uh, upset the trooper, that's why he marched off. pictures uh, for this hapless bunch. That's it bro, thought it'd be the exact right moment. And it just goes on and on and on. And there are more behind me and more behind the ones behind me and more behind the ones behind the ones behind the ones behind me. Never ending stream of enthusiastic people wanting to get pictures with the King's Guard. I mean, I guess, thinking about what Tower Bridge, Buckingham Palace, London Eye, Big Ben, King's Guard. That makes sense. I don't actually know, folks. I don't have the stats for which is the single most popular attraction uh, for tourists wanting to get, you know, super memorable 
pictures in London, but I'm guessing standing at the side of this enormous horse Trinity right now, who's easily 17.3. You can really see, folks, the horse's head is about six, eight, six, eight, seven foot in the air when it's right up. Okay, the first uh, child sacrifices are being wheeled out to the horse. One and two. I'm not sure the horse is actually hungry enough for two this morning though, that's the only thing. Oh, and a third. They're actually queuing up uh, to donate kids to the horse. The key thing though, parents, and it's very important to remember this, especially if your child is very, very small, always hold your child close to the horse's mouth, okay? just in case because otherwise if the horse does decide to, to reach out and have a snack he will not be able to to grab the kid I honestly can't understand much like might mock that situation I can't understand why anybody coming up here regardless of the age of the kid let alone a you know, baby doesn't put themselves between the child and the horse Do they not understand that that one moment of foolishness could uh, could be fatal. Yes, I'm being somewhat dramatic, but goodness me, guys, we've seen a few situations, haven't we, whereby uh, the horse has been more than interested. And that giant animal, you never know. We've seen when they don't want to work and it takes four or five troopers even to get them to settle down. So they got very busy. I don't know what happened to the road. Look, it became a car park. We've got a London taxi and a London bus, guys. Grab your screenshot now. I should start actually selling some of these images to the London Tourist Board. Oh, no, the other horse didn't want to eat this kid, so he's trying again at this end, look. He actually seems super curious though. Take me closer to the horse, let me stroke it. I'm hoping folks that uh, by this time next month we're not going to be seeing hats, scarves and gloves anymore. It's been a hell of a long winter, I think we're due some warm weather. Torch reading out the sign behind me, you can probably hear. Everyone focuses on the bite word and thinks it's a joke, but it's not. Bro is brave coming down here to get a picture with the horse without even brushing his hair. Even I wouldn't do that. Not that I've got a lot of hair to brush, but you see my point. Oh, be careful, chat, you might rub the star off. Yeah, I meant to mention this in yesterday's video, but obviously I got massively distracted um, because there were two parts to yesterday's video. Some of you mentioned that, hey, the video quality seems a bit blurry, fuzzy, whatever, not up to the usual standard, etc, etc. Key thing to remember, folks, YouTube processed the, the video in resolution order, okay? So standard resolution 360p first. That then ends up being 720p, which counts as the first HD level. After that comes the first 60 frames per second video, which is 1080p, okay? After that comes 4K, and after 4K comes the closed captions. So it's a long process. Between uploading the video and the video completely finishing processing and the captions, that can take anywhere from two hours to eight hours plus, depending on how busy YouTube servers are, network issues, 
blah 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 blah. Point being, if the video looks blurry, okay, click on the settings wheel on whichever you know, iPad, Android phone, iPhone, whatever, wherever you're using it, click on the settings wheel and manually select 1080p, 60 frames or 4K. I never ever publish any video, what I mean by that, make it public from private to public, ever until at least the 1080p 60 frames per second version is available. Okay? So if any of you are seeing like a fuzzy video that looks like it was shot in uh, 1974 on a Sony Handycam, it's because you're letting YouTube decide manually which resolution to, to display the video at. If you decide yourself, by clicking on that settings wheel, the resolution you'd like, it will dramatically up the resolution to 1080p or if it's finished, the 4K version. In other words, massive differences. Somebody's also just gotten in trouble inside because they parked, extraordinarily enough, their push chair. They actually parked their push chair in the archway over this side. It's, it's extraordinary. This, this chap, the officer just came past me. He just told them they put their push chair. We didn't see it because I was at the front. They put their push chair just inside. And that was problematic. One, because you're not allowed to do that. But secondly, because the guard, as you saw, just had to leave his post and head to the front. Quite extraordinary. Almost as extraordinary as me almost getting uh, in the way of the guard coming back. Oops. <clears throat> That officer, new officer, does not mess about at all. We've seen him many times at the front telling people to get behind the bollards. Officer on the, uh, on the right hand side there at the front gate. Top man. And I think that both of us missed it. One second. Did, did you see what happened? We parked the, the buggy in the archway yeah. there. I can't believe we missed that, damn it. Look on his face, like, huh? Yeah, <laughs> You were hoping the guard was going to shout on my face, then, weren't you? I can tell. All right, folks, we're back. See, the second I step out of the yard, it all happens. Now I'm back at the front, it won't all happen. It's always the way here. But it is impossible to get, I was going to say the highlights, but they're not really highlights, to get the more dramatic moments without being in four places at the same time. Because every single day, there are three things you can bet on. Somebody gets shouted at, somebody gets in the way of the guard, or somebody gets nipped or bitten every day. And a day has gone by since we started filming here, folks, last year, that one of those three things, or all of those three things, haven't happened. It's an absolute certainty. So the camera's bobbing around a little bit because I'm still deciding the best spot. How can you be that nervous when you're that far away from the horse? <laughs> but here comes her friend. Let's see if she's more confident. Wild guests, wherever they're from, they have horses standing around on the street. It's the perfect height. Look, the sign is right above. It almost looks like the sign's balancing on her head in that picture, doesn't it? It's like, look. Like if she didn't actually pop it on the top of her head, it would have come off. It's up by a single little chain the sign. One thing about which you also never seen here is uh, the sign falling off. I don't think it would happen but the problem if it did happen would be that it would almost immediately crumble. Why? It's a wooden frame around a wooden board. If that dropped onto the uh, onto the pavement here by my sign it would definitely uh, disintegrate. Why is it so busy here for uh, a typical weekday morning? Imagine folks, you decide, hey, I just want to go out, you know, a little bit of sightseeing or whatever, end up in a car park for most of the day. Now, this new bunch, which way are they going to go, left or right? Instinctively, I would have thought most people would go right, because of the two horses, the one on the right is bigger. And definitely more inquisitive. 
But are they going left? Are they going left? Left, 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 left. Looks like it. It looks like it. Okay, welcome tourists. Seventy-three or so. Um, that guy's got to be about twenty-seven-three. Uh, I think it is a group are from France. of getting the impression that Orion is not a happy bunny this morning. In fact, it's going to be a massive group shot. Look at them all. They can't all fit. They're too many. It's a great picture though. Yeah, they're way too many. My, my camera will not go out that far, sadly. Even the horse is posing, look. Sorry, I talked to my video. It's all good. I talked to myself. Hey, but I heard you mention that you're here by yourself. Be super careful here with pickpockets here. Okay. A lot of people have their phones stolen here. No, no, my pleasure. biggest groups. <laughs> In fact, it's not definitely not French, but I hope it was saying we're we good. Which language are you guys speaking? Which language is this? Uh, our like mother language is Turkish, but we speak English. Ah, I thought I heard somebody speaking French a second ago. I'm thinking no, the group is no, French. It's Turkish. Turkish? Yes. Okay. Turkish. Wow. I think you're the first Turkish group I've ever seen here. Obviously, people from all around the world are here for pictures, but I don't think I've ever come across a, a, a Turkish group. You could be the first. Really? Honestly, really? Ser yeah, seriously. Oh. Yeah, it's mainly French, American, Spanish, Italians, Australians, Turkish. I can't even remember that ever happening. Honestly. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seriously. I came here for a uh, like Model United Nations conference. Ah, wait, so yeah. you're all super smart. Future global leaders. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure. Hey, enjoy, yeah? I'm not sure why the troopers are. Oh, hold on a second. Change over time. Oh, yes. I, I of course. Think you know, uh, up there there's a flag. It's a, a blue, red, blue flag. Probably the Royal Iron Force. Wait, where, where is that flag? Uh, in the entrance. Wait, show me? No, it's not here. You can't see it. Oh, at the back? Yeah, they have the, the corpses. They have it on their arms as well. I actually have no idea. I don't even remember seeing it. If I did, I'd probably know what it is. But the, the police, the police would know. The Ministry of Defence police over here, they would definitely know. See, yeah, the two police over by the gate. <laughs> hmm? Ah, oh, there's no, there's a flag at the at the back. I don't know which flag it is though. What it's there for? I don't remember, guys. Blue. Uh blue and red flag. He's definitely not talking about the Union flag. Yeah, <laughs> 
They seem absolutely enamoured by the horse. Real novelty, actually, for this group. It's the flag of the Royal Army. It's the flag of the Army. It's the flag of the Army, they said. I'm guessing. I mean, I don't know. I have no clue. Actually, I didn't even notice it, which uh, is an odd thing because I'm here often. One of your crew just told me you guys are from Turkey, yeah? Yeah, we are from Turkey. Is there anything at all like this in terms of horses either with uh, troopers or police in Turkey? Anywhere in Turkey? Yes, have... Where, where? We have, but we have a lot of them. Yeah? Uh, we don't have... Uh, we have them in uh, where us body lies. We have a lot of them. We have the same thing. Okay, but we're Ankara, Istanbul? Ankara. Istanbul. Ah, Ankara where... Ankara is not, yes. Oh, yeah. so both? Istanbul and... Yeah, uh, yes. our garrisons are... We also respect our military very much, so ah. uh, some garrisons will be very casual soldiers will the hang around. Yep. Some garrisons, like in mostly the sites of vet uh, graves, will be like this. Mm -hmm. Like for example, where uh, Asin's body lies, we have called the Anitskavish, uh, we have soldiers like this. Oh, we have, at where Atatok's body yeah, is? Yes, ah, we have, we have okay. uh, soldier changing, uh, guard changing ceremonies as well. Oh wow, wow. I, didn't, I had no clue about that, actually. no clue at all. That's, to me, that's super interesting. I like the fact that you said as well that uh, you know we respect our military in Turkey. Because one thing I notice here a lot is some nationalities come here, they're, they're crazy disrespectful to the guards. Yeah, I, I like, it's really, do. really, really bad. These You've probably seen it on YouTube. Their, yeah, I've seen these people already sacrifice their lives for at least a monarchy, if not for the country. Exactly that, yep. Uh, and these guys get yeah, disrespect them. I've seen them pass out into heat. They're very dedicated. I don't know why people disrespect them. So it's shocking, isn't it? It is, very much it's, it's so. Pure. It makes, me, I, it makes me want to see them stab by their bayonet. <laughs> I, 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 honestly, sometimes I'm sure the guards think, hold on, if only I could use this sword. Yeah, yeah I, I think he's begging sometimes. So. It's super interesting to me to hear that perspective uh, from you as a Turkish visitor in London. I was saying to one of your, your colleagues who was yeah, talking to me earlier that I've never, I mean, we get groups from all over the world here, but you guys, honestly, the first Turkish group that I've ever come across. Yeah. There are not a lot of Turkish groups that visit here, honestly, I swear. Yeah. You probably haven't seen them. No, no, I always speak to groups, and almost every single time they're French, German, Italian, Spanish, American, you, you, Moroccan. Uh, do you know why? Why? Do you know why? Because all the countries mentioned are in the EU. You okay, that, that's true, but what about, for example, get a lot of people coming from Australia, New Zealand, Mor Morocco, they're, some Algerian they're com groups. They're Commonwealth countries. Commonwealth countries, but they're so far away compared to Turkey. How long does it take you guys to fly here? Four hours? Two hours. Two hours? Yeah. Wait, was it only two hours? Yeah, four four, hours. I, thought, I thought four hours, yeah, yeah. Two hours, that would be like Concord. Yeah. <laughs> Concord. That would be super fast. But we've been here many times. We, yeah? We so crowded groups. Wait, like, so you like it so much, you come back again? Oh, no, this is, uh, uh, he's come with groups. Uh, we're first time, so. Okay, so th this being your first time, what's your impression of this when you see it for the first time? Is it like, wow? They're very dedicated. Yeah, that's a good word. They are very dedicated. They're either doing this for a lot of money or they really love their country. I can tell you it's not for a lot of money. I do know that. So it's got to be out of sense of duty to the country, to the yeah, people, etc. Same with the... Yep, yeah, same with troopers in, in Turkey. They're doing it for yeah, their fellow countrymen. It's especially important since Ataturk has a very important place for any monarch. Uh, or uh, the uh, country. Yeah, uh, father of the Turkish independence, yeah. fundamentally. Atatürk, which means uh, Atta meaning like past uh, ancestor, and Türk, Turk. Uh, ancestor Turk, actually, his name. Uh, it's very important for us. You know, I can see the way you speak about it, so it's a pleasure to listen to it. What's, you. what's your name? Uh, Rüzgar. Rüzgar. How do, you, how do you say it? Rüzgar. 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 I would need I would need a week in Turkey. To, uh, Have a good day. Thank you for talking to me, though. Yeah, it was a real you. pleasure to be uh, to be able to, to learn all that. Thank you. Have a good say, day, guys. Have a good day. As we always say, Atatürk still lives in our hearts. Boom, and rightly so. Enjoy. Wow, what a super fine young chap, eh? And his colleagues. Respect. Uh, be proud of your fellow countrymen and women. So it's watching. That was incredible. Lovely people to talk to. Exceedingly knowledgeable, as he said. Even if you don't respect the reason the troopers are here, the monarchy, respect the fact that they are troopers that serve their country, their fellow countrymen and women. There you heard it, from somebody who is from a country that doesn't have 
a king and queen. Even he gets it, okay? Respect the military for what they're prepared to sacrifice if, God forbid, that day comes. Some people not quite Guys, getting the... Uh, behind the bollards, they're going to change the horse. Oh, there we are. Luckily, the uh, talk, <laughs> little group have decided to camp here at the front. Back behind the bollards. Really on it, aren't they, guys, in the last couple of weeks? 2024 is the year of behind the bollards. These two still haven't quite understood that, that part about getting your kit and yourself behind the bollards. So the officer in a minute is going to lose his temper if they don't get their kit behind there pretty quick. Wow, so, guards on horses in Ankara and apparently, his colleague said, Istanbul. Folks, we're going to have to draw up a list and start visiting these sites. Uh, Sweden's at the top of my list in terms of uh, royal guards on horseback. But the fact that we also have royal guards in Morocco uh, and royal, not royal, sorry. <laughs> we also have guards that are not royal. Also guards on horseback in Turkey. Got to start, yeah, work on that list. It's got to be done, hasn't it, at some point. Okay, from when we decide to move to international. Anyway, why we got the belt? It's noon, 12 noon. Your horse is about to arrive. Bingy Bong. It's Big Ben, folks, in the background. I've got my list open to see which horses are coming out next. Enormous group behind me again, building up. Look. As always, boxmen to your boxes. Very, very busy look for a weekday morning along the front here. Hmm? Hmm. Which Oops! Look at this. I love this guy, honestly, he's super on it. Yes. He is he's really on it, like a hammer, isn't he, this guy? He's very active. Yep, brilliant. How does she not realise that there's 150 people here just watching? Just, oh, just straight in. I thought he was going to rugby tackle her to the ground for a moment. Oops. Here they come, boxing to your posts. So goodbye to Orion, folks. He's off. I wonder who the replacement's going to be. I think it'll be Radom. I just, I just like joked on the video that I was hoping it was going to be art rather than it is, isn't it? <laughs> it actually is. What are the chances of that? Yeah, it is. <laughs> That's that is extraordinary. What a prediction. Guys, this is going to call for a part two. Uh, now we've got Arnie here. I'm <laughs> wondering what kind of mood she's in today. This is the thing. 
I'm noticing how many tourists are to my left. It could be carnage. It's still ongoing because they're changing over the uh, Chisholm Gateswood as well. How the voice carries from the yard, which is a very powerful voice. There to underestimate me. I'm not in the yard for this. Such a friendly face, this horse. Always finish with a changeover inside. <laughs> okay, troop is back in the archway. Relief is done. At the moment, we'll get the flow through the gates from the tunnel. <laughs> so depending on how the horse behaves, uh, that will determine whether or not we end up with a part two. Let's see. Anybody that's dressed like uh, an 80s rapper or a drug dealer deserves to get nipped. Oh, there we are. Don't, don't touch my reins, said the horse. See that? Horses immediately get off the reins. <laughs> no 
Okay, the, 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 just explain to the truth of that. People that are dressed like this, or just respectful, they're the ones that deserve to get pissed Or, of course, reach for the reins. British school group. Let's see if uh, they're respectful of their own history. Uh, bro. Oh, here we go again. Look at you. Look at me. Oh, you always get up at lunchtime. Look at the horse. It's chaos here. Look at it. Oh. <laughs> People are trying to get in the uh, in the camera. <laughs> no, that was not expected, was it? <laughs> oh, goodness. Just when you think you've seen everything. Oh, talking about everything. Look at this, everyone. Oh, officer said she just dropped something on the floor. What did she drop on the floor? Oh, she actually dropped her phone on the floor. How the hell would you drop your phone not even realise she dropped it? See how alert the police are? She actually noticed, as well as controlling her massive horse, that uh, a very clumsy tourist had dropped her own phone on the floor. See, no waiting for these police horses, straight around the queues of traffic. I'm sort of torn a little bit here because we've got huge numbers of people at the front, but we've also got loads of people heading over to the archway. In the yard, so it's a little bit like, ah, what do we do, people? What do we do? I don't know, I have no idea. It could go either way here. This trooper, in fact, this new gatesman, does not mess about at all. If somebody unfortunately makes a mistake of going into the arches, he will not hold back. The thing is, I could stand here all day and nobody would go into the archway. I could move now, and the moment my back is turned, it happens. Uh, in yesterday's video where we saw the small boy run into the archway um, one or two commenters mentioned the fact that oh, I can't believe that he shouted that loud at a kid uh, it's like hello what should have happened he should have grabbed the parents and had the guy shout in their face oh I definitely realise that this group are from Korea not based on language like yesterday with my very unfortunate mistake but hey I'm guessing that would explain the uh, South Korean flag on their suitcases yeah, so I have no idea, folks. But I tell you what I'm going to do. Because it's pretty busy, I'm going to go for a part two. Okay? And what will happen? I have no idea. But I'll be back soon in part two. And uh, we'll see. Bye for now.